Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter topic. In this particular video, we're going to try and put a few different things together. The third section of this module um, is one in which we look at the periodic trends. And what I want to do is rather than go through each of these in individual detail, give you just a couple of these in terms of overview and let you kind of establish some of the other patterns that you might see for yourself. Uh, so let's have a go and let's look at some of the periodic trends uh, for different elements. So the first thing that I want to do is have a look at the melting point trends. Now the important thing about the melting point trends is firstly they vary over a very wide value. So you can see we go uh, from a scale that runs down from minus 500 up to 4000 in fact. I have chosen a value for one of the isotopes of carbon that isn't the highest melting point, and so this graph would be even worse if I had. Um, but you can see that the range is very, very large. You can also see some sort of repetition in the pattern, and that's one of the key things that we're looking for in our periodic trends. So there's a region where the melting point goes up here, and then it kind of goes up here, and then it goes up again here. So is there anything we can identify about these? Well, the first thing we might want to do is look at the fact that this is group one. Um, this is group two. Then we're back to group one, group two, group three, group four, five, six, seven, eight. Then back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight then one and two. So once we look at the groups in this way, and I've used the um, Arabic numerals rather than the Roman numerals, um, you can see that if we concentrate on individual members of particular groups, remembering of course that hydrogen is a little bit of an anomaly in that first group, you can see that there is certainly a rise here up to the group one elements and then another rise from group one to group two in each of these cases. So that's one interesting trend that you might want to look at. Notice too that the two high points here are group four elements. So in fact this is carbon and silicon. This is going to be um, interesting in terms of the way they bond, the network structures that they um, have as solids uh, is a direct contributor to this very, very high melting points and the peaks that we see in the melting point trends. Notice also that straight after four to five, there is a drop more significant between carbon and nitrogen than between silicon and phosphorus, but nevertheless, it's there. Contrast this with the electronegativity values. Now you may not have had a look at electronegativity as a property, as a physical property of elements as yet, and one that specifically affects their ability to react in chemical uh, reactions. The first important thing that we need to notice is that the values here for 2, for 10, and for 18 are actually missing. This is helium, neon, and argon, and these are our group uh, group. Uh, eight or group 18 elements. Um, they're the noble gases, they're the stable ones, and they don't have an electronegativity value, and that's very important in terms of the way they react. But notice, leaving hydrogen out on its own, as we go across the period, so this is going across period two, and this is going across period three, we see a rise in electronegativity trends. Now, this is a very, very significant trend. The other thing to look at is where these peaks are and what is actually happening in terms of these roughly parallel lines. And what you'll notice is, is that we pick out each of the elements that are in the same group. Whilst the pattern is consistent, you can actually see a drop in each case so that the period three elements even the ones in the same group have a lower electronegativity value than the uh, members higher than them uh, further up the uh, group in, in lower periods. This is what we're talking about when we talk about trends. Why this happens is something that we're going to investigate in class, but this should give you a small overview just to get you going. Thanks for watching.